Easily the most unique vehicle to hit the off-road segment probably in years is right there. That is the Mahindra Roxor, and today we're going to put it up against the competition. I've got two established utility side-by-sides, the Honda Pioneer and the Polaris Ranger. I'm going to take all three of these machines, we're going to drive them around my property, run them up the hydro line into the mud, do some work with them, and we'll really see if this Roxor is truly a side-by-side -side competitor. Was that dramatic enough for you? Well, trust me, the differences between this Roxor and the established side-by-sides here are pretty dramatic as well. Unlike other side-by-sides, the Roxor here gets a fully boxed steel frame, solid axles in the front and rear, and leaf spring suspension at all four corners. But let's dive deeper and look at what really sets this thing apart. So that right there is the Roxor's engine. Now that is a 2.5 liter turbo diesel. It makes 62 horsepower at 3200 RPM and it makes 144 pound feet of torque between 1400 and 2200 RPM. So at 62 horsepower, it is just a little outgunned by both of the side by sides here. But with 144 pound feet of torque, this thing is definitely making more torque. Of course, tires are hugely important when it comes to off-road. Now, with our upgraded LE model, we get BF Goodrich KO2s, and they are size 235-70R16, which means we have 16-inch wheels. For stopping power, the Rockstar uses disc brakes in the front and drum brakes in the rear. So the dimensions really set the Roxor apart as well. Now this thing has a wheelbase of 96 inches. That is much longer than both our Pioneer and our Ranger and longer than the majority of two seat side-by-sides anyway. Now the overall length is 148 inches, 156 inches if you include that spare tire. The width here is 62 inches, so that's actually the exact same as the side-by-sides, which is nice to fit in some smaller trails. Overall height is 75 inches, ground clearance just 9 inches and that's definitely where the Roxor falls down a little bit. We will show you more on that in just a moment. Then they say the rear payload capacity is just 349 pounds. I think that's underrated, just like the towing capacity which is 3,000. 490 pounds. So right there we established if you want to tow some heavy weight this Roxor will probably work better for you than any other side by side out there. And I think a big reason for that is the curb weight. So this Roxor has a curb weight of 3,035 pounds. That is nearly double what both of the other two side by sides here weigh. But with the trailer on that just makes it really confidence inspiring. Now the issue with the weight is once you hit the trail. So when it comes to handling in this Roxor. I don't mind the steering. The steering actually has some pretty nice feedback to it, but this thing is just so heavy and the turning radius is horrible. This thing does not like to turn corners. It feels like a battleship when you're turning and just because you're so heavy and planted to the ground, it just has this heavy feeling about it. Uh, especially getting out of the Ranger and the Pioneer, you get into the Roxor and it just feels entirely different. So we spent a day out on the trails running all three of these machines back to back and that's maybe the biggest takeaway. Yeah, this Roxor does not feel like a traditional side by side. But just because it doesn't feel the same doesn't mean it can't do the same stuff. So of course we ran the hydro line and this time I actually had some buddies. So I got behind the camera and I got to watch all three of those machines run through there. Take a look. This is the Hydroline mud pit, and right now it's really deep with water. There's a bit of ice on it. It's been a, there's been a lot of rain the last couple of days. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. We're gonna run them all through, and first up is the Roxor. I've enlisted some help today. I got my brother and a couple buddies out here, and uh, yeah, let's see how she goes through. 
Ready! Rock and roll! <laughs> well, she's an icebreaker. There we go. So the bumper is so low on the rock soar that it's just running right into that ice. This thing has the least amount of ground clearance and it also has open diffs. So it's struggling to get traction. And the issue with the ice... <laughs> yeah, beat that ice into submission. Maybe we should switch up. Let's get the Ranger up here and see if it'll go further. I'm curious, because it's got way more ground clearance and not that big bumper. Well, it's got some grip, but not a ton. Come on, baby. He's working it out. There we go. Okay, bring up the ranger! Four wheel drive! Okay, now let's see how the ranger does. Here's the ice! Oh yeah! <laughs> Now up the hill. Oh man, the ranger walked through that. It's all about ground clearance. Okay, let's do the Pioneer. Okay, no problem for the Pioneer either. Now, now that the ice is broken, I think you got it. Let's give her a shot. Come on, Roxor. Come on, Roxor. Uh-oh. Well, here's the open differential issue. Momentum's your best friend. She's got nothing. Yeah, right? You know what? It's the lowest ground clearance. I have no clearance. I can feel the belly hanging up. Yeah, because you're on the ruts, too. I'm going to try and ride on the side, see if I can get through. Yeah, okay. Hit it with the momentum, man. And you know what? I can see the open diffs. You have one wheel on the front spinning, one wheel on the back spinning. Come on, Roxor! 
The other huge difference here is tires. Now the KO2s on the Rocksor, that is a solid all-terrain tire for road-going vehicles, but when you compare it to the Max's Bighorn, a tire designed specifically for off-road use, it doesn't really compare. These side-by-sides just had a lot more grip thanks to those tires. Yes. Well, she struggled the most, but the Rocksor made her through. So there's no doubt that the ground clearance lets this machine down a bit. Nine inches really isn't a ton. 10 inches, in my mind, is sort of the standard these days in off-road. If you don't have at least 10 inches of ground clearance, yeah, that's not great. Uh, and then the other big thing is that big flat bumper up front. So with our other machines, the bumpers are kind of designed up like this. So if you do hit something, it forces the machine up and over. The Rockstar with its flat steel bumper just plows into things head on. So here on the interior of the Rockstar, this thing is just no frills. There's no unnecessary gauges, dials, screens, none of that. This thing is just dead simple. They do give you a few extra switch cutouts over here if you want to install accessories. And we actually do have an accessory heater installed on our Rockstar, and it's been really nice. It blows down by your feet, and it actually warms this cab up quite quickly. So in the winter time, it's been really appreciated to have that heater. So for storage on this Rockstar, well, there's really not much. There are two lockable bins, you can see it right there, underneath the seat. So there's one under the driver's seat, one under the passenger seat, and that's about it. You get this space back here, and you do have a little tailgate in the back, so accessing this little, you know, bed back here is pretty easy. But uh, in terms of storage, like, take a look. No glove box, no cubbies along the dash, nowhere else to stash your stuff. There are two cup holders. And I have been using them to hold on to some stuff, but for the most part, the rocks are not the best when it comes to interior storage space. But then overall comfort, you know, the seats here in the Rockstar, they're fine. They're a little bit stiff. They're a little bit hard. They're not, you know, really soft cushioned, but I didn't really notice the seats getting, uh, you know, stiff or uncomfortable. And then actually leg room is amazing here in the Rockstar. I can literally stretch my leg out where my knee is locked and I'm just touching the floor in front of me. And as a driver, that's not that important. As a passenger though, it's super nice to have all of that leg room. Neither of these two other side-by-sides allow you to stretch out like this Rockstar does. And the other thing I want to mention on the inside is just the way everything feels in the Rockstar. This thing just feels so mechanical, so simple. Um, when you're, you know, changing from two to four high down into four low, you got to pull that lever and you can actually feel the mechanical linkage working. Sometimes you got to rock the machine to get it to go in. Um, same with the actual manual transmission. Now the shifter here, it's pretty loose. It's pretty long feeling. It's got these big long throws. Um, but still kind of nice notches as they go up into gear and more so than the other side-by-sides or any other modern side-by-side. -side. Yeah, the, the Rockstar here feels really analog. It feels, you know, really like you're doing real physical things to make this machine go rather than something like, you know, the Pioneer's intelligent four-wheel drive where you just throw it in four wheel and you're good to go and that machine does the thinking for you. Here in the Rockstar, you feel like you're a little more involved in the process. Same goes for the clutch here in the Rockstar. It's been really fun to use, and I like it because it's really forgiving. It's not a hard bite. It's a nice progressive bite point, and uh, yeah, you know what? It's actually kind of hard to stall this thing. Take a look at this. So you want to see how much low end is in this Mahindra? This thing is really hard to stall. I got her in two-wheel drive, first gear. I'm gonna dump the clutch. Watch my left foot, here we go. So here we have solid axles front and rear and leaf springs all the way around and Rockstar doesn't even, or Mahindra doesn't even list wheel travel because I don't know what that number is, I'm sure it's small, but when you're riding around in this Rockstar, you do a lot of this. <laughs> it just likes to bounce up and down, it's really, really stiff, you can't take anything at speed. Uh, it essentially makes small obstacles feel big. where really nice suspension like suspension in the ranger xp 1000 is really good and that thing can swallow stuff up so in the ranger it makes big obstacles feel small in the rockstar every little bump feels like a big bump and that's the thing you know I think if you're working with this Rockstar or towing with it, it might be worth your while. So yesterday on the trails proved to me why this Rockstar isn't the best trail riding machine. And don't get me wrong, it's a ton of fun. I had a smile on my face all day long driving this thing. It's, it really is a blast. But the reason it's a ton of fun 
is actually more for the novelty. Uh, it's fun because of how rough riding it is, how different it is, um, how, how it feels so different than the other machines. But the truth of the matter is that after about five hours of hard running on the trails, I was done with it. I, I was sort of like, okay guys, let's leave the rock store behind and just take the other side-by-sides. Because modern side-by-sides are so good at taking that strain out of trail running. So, you know, you're not feeling it in your lower back, it's not beating you up. And that's the thing, machines are so good now, you can run an eight hour day and still feel good. This rock store, despite being a ton of fun, it beats you up. So after a couple hours, you want to get out. And that's the issue with it right there. It might work better than the other two, but when it comes to having straight up fun and spending a day on the trails, there's just no comparison. This Rockstar is not the best for that. Now I think there is something to be said for the simplicity here though. Uh, if I was to do my own repairs on this machine, I mean I could work on solid axles and leaf springs a lot easier than I think I could work on either of those other two machines. So for the home mechanic, for the guy who might end up doing some of their own work, I think there is something to be said for the simplicity of this Mahindra. So another thing we did with all three machines was run through our off-camber ruts to see how the articulation is, but also to see how the differentials work. Now here in the Rockstar we have open differentials front and rear. Now that is changing. Mahindra is right now developing locking diffs that you're going to be able to buy as an accessory. And they might even be available right now. They're really close to being here, but they're not here yet. So our machine here, we don't have any locking diffs. So take a look as we tried to run through those ruts, and it wasn't really the greatest here in the rocks are. Hold it there, keep going. Can you back up? Mark, Mark's moving. You can see here that the solid axles are doing a nice job though of articulating and the Rockstar probably keeps its wheels on the ground the most. Now next up the Honda Pioneer. Now this thing has independent suspension all the way around and the Pioneer actually probably did the nicest job slowly crawling through this stuff with its intelligent four wheel drive and rear locking differential. Now check out the Ranger. Now the Ranger has the most ground clearance of this crew and it has a thick sway bar in the rear. So the articulation actually really wasn't great and you can see right here I was even worried about it rolling so I kind of threw my hand up on the bar. Now the camera was in my hand that's why you see this angle. But the, the Ranger had no issue getting through in terms of traction but the articulation on the Ranger was not that great. And I want to show you exactly how rough the suspension is in this rock store compared to the other two. So take a look at this little trail run section. And we're going to use this trail to show you the suspension differences because it's full of things like these big rocks sticking up which really put the suspension to work. So just watch all three vehicles come through and you can see the difference for yourself and just how they all ride. my buddies up here I actually did load four guys up into the Honda Pioneer just to see how it would work out so two of my friends who sat in the back they're a little shorter than me and it actually wasn't so bad for them they're you know maybe five foot five between five foot five and six feet and they weren't all that uncomfortable but here's actually what we learned running through a bunch of the water the engine in the Pioneer sits down below you behind the driver and front passenger and when the engine gets covered in water and steam comes up the rear passengers get a face full of Steam. So for me and my buddies in the back it was actually kind of funny but if it was your wife or your kids that would not be cool. So something to keep in mind with the pioneers yeah if you're running through deep water and you have people in the back they're getting a face full of steam. The engine's right down there right in front of you guys. That's a heat feature. It's like a sauna. 
Oh, and if I didn't drive this point home yet, let me say it again. The Polaris Ranger XP1000 is really good for high-speed off-roading. The suspension there is unreal how it just swallows stuff up. And of this group I have here, the, the Ranger absolutely was the best at just hitting big whoops and divots and potholes and not even noticing them, and you could just fly across stuff. The Pioneer does a pretty nice job. The Fox Shocks do insulate you well. It's a little rougher riding. And then this Rockstar is just in a whole whole other world when it comes to rough ride. All right guys, I'm parked on a hill here and in this test I want to see in the lowest gear possible how slowly these machines creep down this hill. So we're going to start off here in the Rocksor. Now I have a proper two-speed transfer case. I'll find out the gear reduction for you. I'll put it up here on the screen. So I have her in four low. I'm going to put it into first gear. I'm going to nicely take my foot off the clutch and we're going to see how slowly this thing crawls down the hill. Ready? Here we go. Nice, nice. So the speedometer has us at about, what, three miles per hour maybe? And look how nice and slow this creep is. This is really, really controlled. No runaway at all. Um, even the moment of taking my foot off the brake onto the clutch was no issue. Yeah, the transmission and the gearing in this Rockstar is really nice and low. So if you do want something for just creeping around, this thing is quite good. Okay, here comes the downhill creep test in the Ranger. Now, of course, this is the only side-by-side -side here that has a CVT. This Ranger is belt-driven, so it'll be really interesting to see what it does on this hill. For a long time, CVT-driven ATVs and side-by-sides would just freewheel, and they would just let you take off down a hill. Uh, that has changed, though. A lot of modern side-by-sides are able to keep constant tension on the belt and make sure that you do get that engine braking. So I'm curious to see what happens. So we got her, four-wheel drive, work mode, and then we're in low, and I'm just gonna take my foot off the brake, no clutch here, and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Okay, another really nice, slow creep. Frankly, this might be slower than the Rocksaur. This has got me rated at two kilometers an hour. The Rockstar had me at about three or two or three miles per hour, which is about five or six K. So, uh, Go Ranger, this thing is absolutely just creeping down this hill. Okay, so just to test it, I wanna see what happens if I just tap the gas. Oh, nice, so it accelerated and then instantly caught me. And look at this, just creeping, creeping, creeping. So I was kind of expecting the Rockstar to be the best at this, but this Ranger definitely creeped down slower. Now oh, let's get the Pioneer, let's see how it does with this dual clutch transmission. Okay, and finally the Pioneer here on the hill. So in the Pioneer we got it in four wheel drive, low range, and then I'm gonna put it in manual mode and we'll lock it in first gear. So this is the lowest it can possibly get, low range, first gear, manual's locked. And again, this is a six speed dual clutch transmission. So all three of these are different transmissions. And so far the CVT is winning, which I am a little surprised at. So I'm gonna take my foot off the brake and uh, let's see how the Pioneer does. Oh, okay. So that was funny. It kind of ran away for a second and then caught me. This definitely feels faster than the other two. No doubt about that. It's got me at three miles per hour. So it's clocking me at three, but this feels faster than the Rockstar just from, you know, my feel. The Rockstar was real closer to two. So Polaris was easily the slowest, the Rockstar was in the middle, and then this Honda coming up the rear for just how low, low range is and just how much engine braking these machines have. Okay guys, now we have to talk about what is probably the most important factor for this Mahindra, pricing. So first of all, here in Canada, the Rocksor starts at $20,000 and this LE model with a bunch of these accessories including the windshield and mirrors and the winch up front, heavy duty bumpers and a couple other things, this model sells for $24,792 here in Canada. Well how about the states? The Rocksor in the US starts just over $15,000 and then if you do load up that LE model, you're looking at about 18.5. Now let me tell you why those prices in my mind don't really gel with the rest of the market. 
And that is because the Ranger XP-1000 starts at $15,299. So for essentially the same starting price in the US, you're getting a machine that has much better suspension, a little bit more horsepower, a dump bed, and it can still seat two people, and it's just a little bit smaller. Sure, you can't just tow massive loads with that Ranger, but besides that, there's not a lot that the Rockstar can do that the Ranger can't, and the Ranger can provide you with a real fun day out on the trails, not beating you up. Now, if you do load the Ranger up um, with the Pursuit camo like our model has, you're looking at $16,499 in the US, twenty grand here in Canada, but still, those prices for that machine just make the Rockstar look a little bit too expensive. Now the Pioneer does cost $22,099 in the US and $25 here in Canada, so it is more expensive. Now the model we have is an LE model, so it is the upgraded model, and once again, even for two grand, I think I would still get the Pioneer. You get that fully working dump bed, you get the two seats in the back so you can carry four people, and then once again, a solid engine uh, and good suspension, yeah, there's just not really a comparison when it comes to modern day side-by-sides and something like this rocks. Pricing is an area where honestly I think Mahindra dropped the ball. If this thing started at 10 grand and the upgraded model was 14 or 15, you know what? I might actually be arguing that yeah, the Rockstar is worth it because the break you're getting on the price is worth the trade-off for the bad suspension here, but that's not the case. This thing is just as expensive as modern side-by-sides and those modern side-by-sides are so good that yeah, the Rockstar just comes across feeling expensive. Well guys, I've got an answer for the question I asked off the top. Is the Rockstar a true side-by-side -side competitor? The answer is no, at least in my books. It's just so different. If you're an enthusiast like me, you want a machine that can do some hard work, but then that can return day after day after day of riding fun out on the trails. And the Honda Pioneer and Polaris Ranger absolutely deliver that. Now the Rockstar here, if you prioritize heavy payload and towing big trailers, the Mahindra is gonna be more confident than I think any other side-by-side -side on the market. And like I said, hitting the trail, the Rockstar is a ton of fun to drive because of the novelty, and I'm worried that if you buy one of these things, the novelty is gonna wear off really quick. So as always, guys, make sure you hit subscribe to the channel and come back here to TFL Off-Road for the latest news, views, and real-world reviews. See ya.